Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Today I am quilting and binding a quilt that I made recently, a scrappy baby quilt. Let's get started. The first thing I had to do after finishing my quilt top was find a backing in my stash. I was hoping I could find something to go with this quilt and I just love this fabric and it was the perfect size. It's an older fabric. When I looked it up and tried to find um, where it could be purchased or what year it was made, I could not find anything. But there was the information on the salvage. And this is what I'll be using on the back. And then I used some leftover batting that I had. And it wasn't quite big enough. So I am piecing two large pieces together for this baby quilt. I had to pull out my old older machine that has zigzag the machine i use every day does not have zigzags so when i do a zigzag stitch i have to pull out another machine and it took me a minute to get the right stitch i wanted a big stitch and i wanted a big zigzag stitch and once i got that settled this took no time at all to patch these two pieces together Now that I have the backing and the batting ready, I'm going to make my quilt sandwich and I'll lay the backing down, face down. I'll put the batting on top of that. I'll get everything lined up and then I'll use a spray called 505 spray and I'll just use a tiny bit on the batting. I spray the batting and then I smooth the top down and then I smooth the backing down. I turn it over and I do the same thing on the back. And now I'm ready to quilt my baby quilt and I've decided that I'm going to use a straight stitch. So I put a walking foot on my machine and I'm going to follow the angle of those big diamond shapes. And I want to start the angle way out at the edge of the border. So what I did is I took a ruler and I laid it along that diamond. And then I took a bamboo skewer some people use something called a Hira marker. I think it's called, I don't have one of those, but this bamboo usually works pretty good for me. I just do one seam at a time, so I mark it. And then I'll be going on both sides of the seam. So I'll also be going on both sides of that little mark that I made on my quilt. And I started somewhere in the middle and just started following that angle all the way through the quilt.
Once I had all of those lines in my quilt, I took this over to my cutting table and I trimmed away the excess following the top of my quilt. I found this beautiful red polka dot in my stash and this is what I'll be using for the binding. I'll cut all the strips two and a half inches wide, the width of the fabric. Now I'm going to join all my strips, putting them sort of at a right angle there and then sewing from corner to corner. I'll trim away that triangle that's extra there and I will um, make this into a really long binding strip and then I'll press it in half so that I can attach it to my quilt. I'm attaching my binding to the back of my quilt, then I will roll it to the front and top stitch. So I'll leave a tail because I'm going to do a continuous binding on this quilt. And after I get all the way around, I'll show you how I'm going to attach those two ends. So I'm gonna start somewhere in the middle on the side, leaving about 10 inches um, or so. And when I get to the corner, I will stop right before the corner, maybe a quarter inch before the corner. And I will leave my needle down and then I'll pivot my quilt and sew off of the corner of the quilt. So I'll have a little angled line there. And then I put the quilt down and I lift that binding straight up and then I fold it right down and then I'll begin sewing at the very top and that will give this a nice corner when I turn the binding over to the front. So I'm done sewing all the way around and I left an opening and I'll fold that left side of the binding and I'll cut the right side right on the fold and I need to have at least two and a half inches left over there on the left. I have more than that, you can see. And I'll use that extra piece to measure. It should be two and a half inches. And then I will cut a little bit off right there and so my binding should be exactly two and a half inches 
longer all the way around and whatever size binding you use that's the, the size that you cut then I open those up and I will be placing them together just like I did when I was joining that long piece of binding sort of at a right angle and I'll pin it and I'll sew from corner to corner and this should fit exactly onto my quilt and I always double check after sewing that seam I make sure that it fits correctly and then I pin it down and I finish sewing that opening and you uh, just don't know where the binding ends and where it begins so this is just a little trick to get your binding on your quilt chose a red thread that would match my binding because I will be top stitching all the way around and I usually do not pin I just roll the binding to the front and I just kind of roll it as I go and that seems to work for me I've seen uh, many quilters will pin all the way around and I do sometimes but today I am just gonna roll and go This is such a beautiful quilt. I can't wait to give it to the new mom. She's due any day, and I'm really happy I was able to finish this in time for that new baby. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.